I have the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra right here. And today I'm going to show you how we can gain root access to the Galaxy S21, the Galaxy S21 Plus, as well as the Galaxy S21 Ultra. Now I do want to point out that right now the only way to do this is by using the Canary version of Majisk, previously known as Majisk Manager. This means that there can be some bugs that have yet to be worked out. This is required because the current stable version is not yet compatible with the Galaxy S21 series. Now this will change in the future and I will be sure to make note of it in the video description. So be sure to read that to get an updated step-by-step -step tutorial. The process that we're going to go through today is virtually the same. The only difference is that we have installed the Canary version instead of the stable version. But I'm going to show you how to get both of those in this video. Now before we start, you're going to need to have the bootloader of your Samsung Galaxy S21 unlocked. I know that this is only officially available in certain versions, such as the Exynos variant and the Snapdragon variant sold in select countries like China. But before you can begin, you need to have the bootloader unlocked. And I'll be linking to how to do that again in the video description below. With that done, we then need to have some other things set up. We need to have the Odin pro program downloaded and extracted on our PC. We also need to have the latest firmware downloaded on your PC. And that firmware needs to match the current firmware you're running on this device. Again, I've done tutorials to show how to download those firmware files. And again, I'll be linking those in the video description. Once you have downloaded that firmware file onto your PC, you're going to need to extract the contents of it because in those, in that file is going to be a firmware file that begins with AP. We need to copy that AP file to our Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. And like I mentioned before, we also need to have Majisk installed. So unless the update that includes the S21 patch is rolled out in the stable version right now, which again I'll be including in the video description, we need to download the Canary version of Majisk. So I download this by going to Google and searching Majisk GitHub, which takes me to the official Majisk page. And we can either grab the Canary version of Majisk Manager or the stable version. As of right now, we need to grab the Canary version, which I have previously downloaded and installed, which gives us this new updated UI right here because the developer changed this no longer named Majisk Manager. And once that's installed, we're going to simply tap on the install button in the Majisk section right there. And we're going to choose the select and patch a file. Now remember, I've already downloaded the firmware file on the PC. I've already extracted it, and I've already copied this big 7 gigabyte file to the Galaxy S21. Because we need to browse to where this file is located, and then select it. Once that's done, we can just tap the Let's Go button right there. And if we look at the top, we can see exactly what Majisk is doing to that AP file. 
that AP file consists of a number of different files. It needs to copy those, it needs to patch those, and it needs to write the changes back to that original AP file. However, they've changed the name of the AP file and is now labeled magisk underscore patched. I've just finished copying the magisk underscore patched file from the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra back to my PC and I've just tossed it in the same folder as the other firmware files that I previously extracted. And now we need to boot this device into what is known as download mode. We do that by first powering off the phone. Then you need to make sure you grab a USB cable, wait for the device to completely be powered off, press and hold both the volume up and the volume down buttons, and then while holding those two buttons insert the USB cable. That will take us to this blue, not download mode, but just simply a splash screen that we need to first press the volume up button, just a single press to actually enter download mode. And now we're going to open up Odin on our PC and actually flash the firmware files back to our smartphone. Just to give you a look of how my desktop was set up, I used Freya to download the firmware. Then I made sure that firmware that I, I, that I downloaded matched what I had currently installed through the about phone section and software section. This is the big firmware file that I downloaded. When I extracted the contents of that file, I got these five files. Remember, we copied the AP file to the PC to the phone so that we could patch it with Magisk. And that's what this is. This is simply the same contents as the AP file with a different name different file extension, but it's patched with the Magisk binaries that we need to actually have root access. So we're going to load up these files into Odin. If you have not installed Odin yet or downloaded Odin, check the video description. When you have the Galaxy S21 Ultra connected to the PC with the USB cable, and you're in download mode, you need to make sure that the log section in Odin says the last thing is that it has been added. That means and then your COM section should look similar to this. You may have a different COM number, but you still want that blue shade. That means that your USB drivers are all set up correctly. And if that's not how it's showing on your side, you need to um, troubleshoot your USB driver issue. So what we have here is Odin, and we need to take those firmware files and plug them into four of these slots right here. So we simply, we're going to click on the BL button right here and then load that BL firmware. Then we're going to click the CP button and then load the CP firmware file. CSC. So let's go ahead and do that. So just like I said, we're going to click BL. We're going to browse to where we have that our firmware at. And we're going to select the BL file. We're going to do the same with the AP file the AP slot, but remember we're not going to use the stock AP. If we wanted to unroot our device and return to stock, we would select that, but we want to root the phone. We want Magisk installed, so we're going to choose the Magisk patched file right there. We're going to click the CP slot and select the CP firmware file. Now, if this is your first time rooting the phone, then we need to do a factory reset to complete the process. We need to wipe the encryption 
so that Magisk can be installed properly. Afterwards, we can update and install firmware updates with Magisk without wiping. So we can actually manually install over the air updates without doing a data reset. However, the first time we root the phone, we need to click the CSC button right here and choose the CSC option. Once you're ready to go, we're just going to click. Again, make sure that each of these four slots has the appropriate file loaded into it. And when you're ready, just go ahead and click Start. And we actually get a log output step by step of each file that's currently being copied to the phone and flashed to the phone. So we're just going to be, be, be patient. I wouldn't touch or mess with the USB cable or the phone, really. There's no need to try to disturb the USB cable connection. I don't think that that would put you in any danger of breaking the phone. It's very easy to just boot back into download mode on Samsung phones and flash firmware files using Odin. So even if something messed up right here, we can simply revert back to stock by flashing those original firmware files with Odin. But we're just going to be patient. We have both have a progress bar right here as well as a progress bar on the Samsung Galaxy S21. And when it's done, assuming you didn't uncheck the auto reboot button, the Samsung Galaxy S21 should reboot like it did as soon as you see the pass message right here. And that's gonna reboot and boot us into a factory reset like I mentioned. So whenever you see that first reboot, it's going to give you a warning screen telling you to press the power button to continue. You don't have to do that, but it will initiate the boot into that next cycle a lot quicker. And like I said, we're just simply going to wait patiently. This first boot back into Android is going to take a little bit longer than you might be used to because Android has to set everything back up. We're going to be taken to the Android activation screen. And I'm just going to activate Android real quick. So again, we're just going to skip through most of this just so that we can get into the operating system. So when we boot back into the OS, we're going to need to download Magisk again. Again, we're simply going to sideload it like normal. Since I used the Canary version before, I'm using the Canary version again. But remember, if the S21 compatibility has been switched over to the stable version. You're free to use that, and I'll be sure to make note of that in the video description. When you first open up Magisk Manager, or Magisk App, however you want to call it, the first time it's going to require additional setup. So when you see this pop up, just tap on OK. It's going to finish up that installation and then reboot the phone. And 
and that's just going to boot us back into Android. You don't have to press that power button key again whenever we boot back into Android. It's just a way to quickly bypass that splash screen that you see. And we can even avoid that by installing a custom kernel. And I'll try to do a tutorial on that in the future. So when you boot back into the operating system from that reboot, we can go ahead and open up the Magisk Manager application again to make sure that it detects that Magisk is installed properly. Make sure that everything is up to date. And we can even go in and use a third party application like Root Checker to confirm that we have root access. And there you have it. That is how to gain root access using Magisk on the Samsung Galaxy S21, the Samsung Galaxy S21 Plus, and the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra.